Hi, welcome to our show, Karate and You. I'm your host, Master Art Bynes. As you know, Karate and You wasn't designed specifically just to promote United States Black Cat Kempo, but to promote all styles of martial arts so we may all unite in a common cause to help improve our country and make it a happier, healthier, safer place to be. Well, on today's show, we have something a little special for you, but before we begin, I'd like to introduce my good friend and student to my right, Mr. Rob Polvino, who's 36 years old and happens to be an airline pilot. And... What we're going to be doing on today's show, we've decided that a lot of you have been calling us in, all right? Calling in, calling in, saying you'd like to take karate at our studio. Unfortunately, you're not in our area, all right? And as opposed to me trying to encourage you to come on down, I'd rather see you go to a school in your nearby area, in your local town, or within maybe a 10-mile radius. Now, what we're going to be doing on today's show, however, will give you a basic insight to what you might expect taking your first introductory class in a karate studio. Now, what you'll see on today's show is not exactly what you'll be seeing in a different studio, but basically you'll see things that will run parallel. So at least you'll have your feet wet. All right? So without any further ado, turn on your VCRs, and we'll be right back. Hip. Backward. Hip. Hi, right, welcome back to our show. Uh, before we begin, uh, continue, I mean, I'd like to explain also that Mr. Polvino's daughter was the young lady that you saw in our matchup of the week in last week's show. Okay, she's one of our red belts. And uh, being doing so well in the martial arts, she had a lot of influence on her, on her father deciding to take the martial arts. So it's become more or less a family thing with them. Um, next, what I'd like to do is I'd like to explain a little bit about what we call the ranking system in the martial arts. Now, let me just hold this up a little bit so you can see fairly well. The ranking system in the martial arts is very similar in all styles. The difference basically is that the is a difference as far as colored belts are concerned, and the difference would also be the number of belts that are in a particular style. Now, the colored belts basically indicates your uh, degree of proficiency, how well you're doing in the martial arts. In this particular instance, our particular style, we only have what we call seven cues. And a Q is anything below the level of black belt, okay? Black belt level and above becomes Dons, D-A-N. Now, in our style, we have seven Qs. Yellow belt is what we call the seventh Q, all right? In the yellow belt, we have a second stage yellow belt and a first stage yellow belt. First stage is the highest level of proficiency, and that would give you a seventh Q. So your first stage yellow would be a seventh Q. Then from there you go on and you go to an orange belt. Orange belt second stage, which actually in actuality is really the first stage of your orange belt. It's coming from the yellow to the orange. Second stage, and then you get to your first stage orange becomes the sixth cue. All right. Then you move on up from the first, uh, excuse me, from the seventh, uh, sixth cue orange. You move up until your fifth cue greens, and then from your fifth cue green you go to your fourth cue purple. Now in the red belt division, all right, we have actually three different cues, three different entire cue system there. In other words, we have a third cue, a second cue, and a first cue, and that's how we have our seventh cues, all right? Now, again, yellow belt would be your seventh cue, orange belt is your sixth cue, green belt, fifth cue, purple belt, fourth cue, and then red belt, there's three stages, third, second, and first. First is your highest level of cue. Now, different styles may not give you, for instance, an orange belt. They might eliminate completely. Or they might substitute with a blue belt. They might not give you a purple belt. They might substitute that with a blue belt. They may not give you a red belt. They might give you a brown belt. Okay, or they might give you a brown belt and a red belt. They might have 10 cues in their system. They might have seven, they might have five, they might have eight. Depending on a particular style determines the cue or the ranking system. Now, once we get past our, our first cue, which is our red belt stage in our particular style, then you go up into your dons, all right? Our style, we have five dons at the present time. Some styles have 10, some styles have eight, and some only have five, 
Okay. Again, the determin determining factor is the system that you're involved with. All right. So we have a yellow, orange, green, purple, red, and black. Now, what we history tells us that as far as the Q system is concerned, the reason that they incorporated the Q system was a lot of people were more concerned with the basic fact of they're interested with the quantity as opposed to the quality of the martial arts, particularly in the Far East. The Far Easterns, they had a little bit more uh, what we call a, a little more honor, a little more integrity in respect that they didn't need to have these belts to determine where their level of proficiency is. Okay, They realized and they were taught that it wasn't the belt that made the person, it was the person that made the belt. So it was what they felt in their heart and what they knew in their mind determined their level of proficiency. All right, when martial arts became more commercialized and started traveling throughout the world, people needed some type of recognition. They needed some type of positive reinforcement to let them know that they were starting to accumulate their skills and they were starting to climb the ladder to the coveted black belt. All right, what history tells us also is that they basically started off with a white belt, like Mr. Polvino has one. Okay, they start with a white belt, and then what would determine the uh, his, his experience and his expertise would be how dirty this belt got from him putting it on all the time and training with it. So you would determine a man's skill visually by how dirty this thing, when this thing started to get real dirty and greasy, started to smell, we'd assume that Mr. Polvino was a very high proficiency in martial arts, okay? Something that a lot of us don't realize in today's modern society, okay? It's not the belt that makes the person, it's the person that makes the belt. That's very, very important because when we walk out into the real world every day of our lives, we don't have that black belt around our waist. We don't have that red belt, purple, green, orange, or yellow. It's what we accumulate and what we develop in our hearts and what we develop in our mind. That's what makes a true martial artist. Okay, now, what we're going to be doing next, we're going to give you the basic format as to what you might be expected to do when you go into a karate studio for your introductory program or your introductory class, your first time in. Now, we're going to say Mr. Polvino, Mr. Polvino incidentally was training over a little bit over two and a half months. He's come a long way. He's doing very well. He's very dedicated, very well disciplined. So that's one of the major factors why we're using him for today's show. Um, Mr. Polvino already purchased his uniform because he's real psyched on his karate program. He's got his OB on, properly, OB's properly tied, his uniform's tucked in, right side in, left side over the top. And he's all ready, set to go. He's all psyched up. Am I correct, sir? That's correct. Sir. Okay. Now, here we are. We're in our karate studio. First thing we do is we face each other. And what we call, we have a term called chi up, which means attention. Anytime you're in our studio and you hear the term chi up, no matter what you're doing, you get into an attentive position immediately. All right? Because the number one priority, and it should be in all karate studios, is safety. Safety is more important than anything else. Because if you don't have a high safety factor, it's inevitable sooner or later you're going to have injury. And the reason that we encourage safety so much in our martial arts training, particularly with the little individuals, the young people, is that the more we concentrate on them and more reinforce them as to the safety factors involved with their everyday lifestyle, the less chance of them sustaining injuries, not only in the karate dojo, but home as well, are going to be much more nullified. Okay? So from here, the word chi up means attention. I don't care if your pants are falling down, you got something hanging out of your nose, you stop immediately, listen for instructions. So when you get to a tension position, your feet should be out just a little bit, just like so, toes out, your chest out, hands to your side, and your chin should be dropped just a little bit. Okay, now that's our chi up position. Now when we begin class, the first thing we do is we put our, our uh, chi up position, we face each other, there's communication. Right now we're showing a mutual respect for each other. We go into what we call a deep bow position. We do a deep bow, I'll do it first, sir. I drop down to my knees. Both knees hit the floor simultaneously. I put my toes back. I sit back on the heels of my feet, and I'm in a good posture, good erect position. You can do the same, sir. Very good. Now, the reason we do a deep bow, and I want to I make a real serious point here, that there is no religious significance in the martial arts. All right? A lot of people say, gee, what's all that bowing about? Who are they bowing to? You're bowing to yourself. You're showing a mutual appreciation for the fact that you're taking an art form and it makes you more serious as to what you're doing. I'm showing a mutual respect for my student. My student in return is showing mutual respect for me. Now the deep bow, our particular uh, definition is, so what we do at this point is we bend down, we drop our head, we want to clear our mind of anything that went on during the duration of the day. If I had an argument with my girlfriend or I had an argument with somebody or there was something that happened in my life that was very exciting to me, or I'm going home, I'm going to have a big steak dinner, or I'm going out to the movies, I want to eliminate it out of my mind. So I pause for a second. So when I sit back up, 
All I'm doing is concentrating on my martial arts training. All I'm going to do is absorb knowledge just like a sponge absorbs water. Very important. Again, it brings us right on back to that safety factor. The more conscientious we are about what's going on around us, the less chance to sustain an injury. All right, so from here, I'll go first. Your hands drop in, you drop down like so to your elbows, and you just pause for a second. You relax, and I'm clearing my mind. I take a deep breath, exhale. And when I sit back up, I want to discipline myself and say, I'm ready to learn the martial arts. Anything that went on during the duration of the day no longer exists in my mind. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to feed my mind with knowledge. So from here, both of us will go at the same time. Hip. And sit back. Now, proper protocol, proper etiquette tells us that when we stand, you never go ahead of the instructor. The instructor goes first, all right? That's proper courtesy. So from here, what I do is I roll forward on my knees, I curl my toes back underneath me, and I sit back, and I come up into that attentive position, sir. Now, we just pause for a second to clear our minds. We're ready to open class. We have two more very important things to do. The first thing, and one of the most important, is to face the American flag and honor our flag, show our appreciation and respect for our country. Yep. Second thing we do is we face each other, and now we have a mutual respect with each other. We use proper eye contact, we bow in, hip. And this is a form of a greeting, a form of respect. No words need be said. There's a communication, eye contact, okay? Now, another reason why we do the bow is a form of appreciation, a, pro a form of acknowledgement, a form of respect. If you have a classroom full of 20 people in your dojo, as opposed to walking around saying, hi, Rob, how you doing? Hi, Mike, how, Susan, how's everybody doing? That's time element involved. By the time you say hello to everybody on a one-to-one -one level, you got 15 minutes go by your class. So here you all fall in, you chi up, you bow in, hip, and we all said hello to each other. And the class has now officially begun. Now, any time you start your martial arts training or any physical activity for that matter, it's imperative that you do some type of warm-ups. Now, we're, today's show, we're not going to spend a lot of time doing some warm-ups. We're just going to do some basics just so you get a basic idea. Now, a lot of people, they would prefer to go to a karate school. If they're in, in, a, in, in a karate school for an hour, they'd like to do about 40 minutes of exercise. You're wasting your time and you're wasting your money. Okay? 15 minutes of exercise is good to get the blood circulating. Build up a little cardiovascular conditioning in the body. Strengthen up the body, do some strength drills, do some flexibility drills, some stretching drills. All right? The exercise and the calisthenics, once you get a basic foundation, should be done at home. All right? Maybe for a half hour, 45 minutes. In, in the dojo, 15 minutes is just about what you need to get the blood pumping. Get all the muscles nice and warm and get ready to roll. All right? The, the determining factor on how much exercise or how much warm-up you do is going to depend on the instructor's routine for the day, what he has planned in the curriculum for the day. All right? So if you all of a sudden you find yourself, maybe you're, you're doing a lot of stretching, maybe you're going to be concentrating that particular day. If not, maybe you're going to be doing something that's not going to be so stressful. Maybe you're going to be doing more uh, involvement with philosophical points of view, more acquiring the knowledge of philosophy as opposed to the knowledge of the anatomy. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to do some basic warm-ups just to give you an idea of some things that you might encounter. So first thing you're going to do is spread your legs, sir. Hands on your hips, all right, and I want your head to go up and down. If you feel dizzy at any time, keep your eyeballs over. Never close your eyes because you're going to get dizzy. Anytime you feel dizzy in a karate studio, don't look for permission to sit down. Sit down immediately. The instructor will definitely understand. Don't be afraid about embarrassing yourself or anything else because if I ever feel dizzy, I don't care where I am. I'll sit right down on my rear end as fast as you can say, uh, whatever, Carter liver pills or something. Thin. All right, head up and down. Head up and down. That's it. All right, good. Now you're going to go from side to side. That's it. Loosen it up. Okay. Two areas that are most common as far as injuries are concerned, the martial arts or any physical activity, particularly once you get past the age of 25, neck area, lower lumbar area, groin area. So these three particular areas, we want to make sure that we're nice and loose and nice and warm. Okay, good. Now just kind of roll your shoulders in a big circular motion. Good. Other direction. Good. Up and down. And front and back. There we go. Good. Now just twist your torso from side to side. 
All right, so you hear all kinds of nice, exciting noises in your back. That means you're alive. Okay. If you do feel any stress, any excruciating pain, any discomfort, don't overextend yourself. Don't overdo it. Again, don't be embarrassed. You're in your karate class for the first time. You know, you're doing things that your body's not used to. At the end of class, or if something really bothers you, raise your hand. Or at the end of class, go up to your instructor and explain to him what you've experienced. Good. Okay, the next one is my favorite. Hands on your hips, bend your knees, big rotation in the hips. All right, bend your knees, just your hips now. There you go, get those hips going, you know, doing a little hula hula. Okay, other direction, just the hips. Now we're working on our lower lumbar, working on the ball and socket joints in our hips. Nice and loose. Good. All right, and stop, put your feet together. Hands on your knees, drop your rear end, rotate your knees in a big circular motion. That's it. Keep your rear end down. Now, any type of physical activity, like I say, time and time again, that you encounter or you participate in, you should be doing some warm-up exercises. Because if you don't, and you're not taking the time out to take care of that body, you're going to wind up sustaining an injury. If you sustain an injury, then your training is going to be coming to a halt. And who knows how long that's going to be. So be smart, be intelligent, be logical. The body needs to be warmed up. Take the time out to, to warm it up properly. This way you can eliminate any opportunity for injuries to be sustained, okay? Doesn't mean that you alleviate 100%, but there's less chance. Okay, good, that's good, sir. Now just come in and out, just like this. A little faster there. There we go. Okay, spread your legs out. Up on the balls of your feet, what you're gonna do, you're gonna take deep breaths. Your hands go off this way. Big circular motion, inhale through your nose, expand your chest cavity, take it right down to your diaphragm, inhale. Up on the balls of your feet, exhale. Big circle, deep breath in. Out, in, and out, in, and out. Okay, good, now just kind of loosen up, move around like a, a marionette, bouncing around right over here a little bit closer to me. Nice and loose, nice and loose, and chi up. Okay, now, what we just did was we did a simulation of some of the warm-ups. We only did about maybe two minutes. Two minutes is not enough. You have to put in at least minimum, minimum 15. So we put the 15 in, all right? Now, next thing he has to learn is he has to learn how to get into a ready position or a jumbi position. Jumbi means ready. So from here, I'll demonstrate to you first. From here, my left hand is a chop, my right hand is a fist, my left leg comes up, and I step off to the left side of my body, thrusting my hands out in front of my body. From here, my knuckles are cocked down, my knees are bent, my knuckles are protecting my groin area, my chin is dropped, this way my forehead, as far as the upper portion of my head is concerned, the closest body part towards, the to towards my adversary, or my opponent, would be my forehead, and that's our secret weapon. If someone punches in the forehead, they hurt their hand. You don't want your chin up, because you're exposing your throat, you're exposing your chin, and also your schnozola. So your forehead should be dropped a little bit, eye contact straight ahead, and this is your ready position. And you might have to stay in this position for a very long time. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get into that jumi position. Ready? Hup. Good. Chi up. And I want you to snap it into it quicker. Jumi. Hup. Chi up. Good. Chi up. Fake you out. Jumi. Hup. Chi up. Chi up. Almost got you. That's why it's imperative that you listen for instructions. Jumi. Hup. Chi up. All right, now, next command will be chuck. Chalk means rest, okay? So if you're in this position here, from here you step to the left, your left hand opens up, your right hand opens up behind your body, just like this, like at ease in the service. Chalk. And you can rest from that position. Now, he just learned three basic commands there. Chi up, jumbi, and chalk. Attention, ready, and rest. Attention, ready, and rest. Now, one of the things you have to have before you start your martial arts training, you have to walk in there and you have to what we call empty your glass. All right. If you're at someone's house and they ask you to taste a, a very expensive type of a wine, or you kids are out there and your friend's trying to encourage you to try some new high C grape, all right. before you taste that, you want to make sure that that glass is empty properly. You want to make sure that there's no, there's no any trace of any other flavor in that glass. You don't, want any, any, you don't want any other type of wine in there before you can really appreciate what you're going to be trying. All right, so that glass is clean. Now, when you try something, you can really appreciate what it has to offer. So when you take the martial arts, you must walk in with an open and a clean mind. Be willing 
to try and absorb. Taste it. Savor it. If you like it, you continue with it. If you don't like it, you don't continue with it. But you must do that. Now, once you have that frame of mind, the next thing you have to develop is the attitude. You have to have the right attitude because nothing can happen unless you have the proper attitude. You can't get A's on your report card. You can't excel at your job. You can't excel in a relationship. You can't be a good father. You can't be a good mother. You can't be a bodybuilder. You can't be a good karate ka. You can't be a good gymnast. You can't be a gold medalist unless you have the proper attitude. Attitude comes first. Skill comes second. Attitude first. Skill second. All right? So Mr. Polvino obviously has the right attitude. Okay? He's been training for two and a half months. He's there all the time. He's really he's, he's fit into his schedule. He's disciplined himself. He's, he's being attentive. He trains at home. He practices at home. He's developing the proper attitude. He sees a goal in front of him. Mr. Polvino wants to become a yellow belt. All right? Mr. Polvino wants to become a yellow belt. In his mind, Mr. Polvino is already a yellow belt. He's ready to go. All right? Remember, the attitude is very, very important. Now, what we're going to do next is, real quickly, we're just going to show you how to bow properly. Chi up. When you bow in, I would just like to see you bow. Hip. Okay? You want to make sure that you not only bow with your body, but you bow with your mind as well. Attitude. Knowledge of the mind, honesty of the heart, strength of the body. These are the things you want to be conscious of when you're doing your martial arts training. All right, that brings us to almost the close of our show already. Time flies. We didn't even break a sweat. I think we're going to get you on next week's show because you're so good. At this time, we want to bring you to the exciting part of our show, the match of the week. So sit back and relax. Jumbi. Okay, you're going to do it. Okay. Start. Okay, here we are for our match of the week. We've got two gentlemen. The gentleman to the right, you may have seen his handsome face on our show a few times. That's Mr. Eddie Anderson, who's 11 years old and is a B student. And his fellow student and opponent for this week's match of the week is Mr. John Billington, who's 10 years old and is an A student. As you've noticed, all of our students are A and B average. Now in, fight. We encourage that academic excellence. Combine that with the positive confidence that one acquires through the martial arts and the physical aspect. They develop a positive self-image, enabling them to be able to deal with the many obstacles that they'll be coming into contact during the duration of their lives. Ace. The concept here is that yeah. if you have an individual who has the ability to defend himself and has, oh. projects a positive self-image and confidence Ace. amongst his peers at the same time, he can keep it B or A average. He'll have a positive influence on his fellow students in school. Ace. Ace. And it's inevitable that we'll have a snowball effect. The martial arts is not designed specifically just for punching and kicking. Nice back fist by Mr. Billington. Mr. Anderson's dropping his hands. Oh, beautiful butterfly kick. Excellent technique. Good combination. Good, good, good recovery there by Mr. Billington, too. Good counter with the hands. 30 seconds to go. 30 seconds to go. Both men know they got 30 seconds to go to push, dig way down inside. Good combinations. About 10 seconds to go. Pour it on. Back to the center. There you go. Okay, good fighting, good fighting. Face cameras. Face cameras. Oh. Each other. Oh. Those little guys can go, can't they? Sit back. We'll be right back. Okay. Jumbi. 
Okay, what I want you to do next is I just want you to pull you right. Hi, welcome back. Um, what we covered on today's show basically was proper etiquette and proper protocol. The basic foundation to excel in the martial arts, the basic foundation to excel in life is proper etiquette, proper protocol. Okay, Discipline and attitude, don't forget those two things, very important. In order to acquire any skills, you must have the proper discipline, you must have the proper attitude, and then there's nothing that you can't achieve within reason. Okay. Next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to go over again this seminar that I've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. Again, if you have an interest in the martial arts or you are in the martial arts, this is a seminar which I think you should all should attend. It's going to be at Lakewood High School. It's going to be on April 17th, and it's from 2 o'clock until 8 o'clock in the evening. Lakewood High School, Lakewood, New Jersey. I'm just going to read real quickly a little bit about Mr. Reed's biography, and then I'll give you the address. You can contact me, and next, next week we may have some other people, other karate studios that you might be able to contact for tickets. All right, Grandmaster Reed is a ninth degree black belt known as the father of the U.S. Taekwondo. He's the founder of the Martial Arts Congress for Education. He is the author of five books. He is the recipient of the Bicentennial Sports Award, the Martial Arts Man of the Century, Muhammad Ali is Boxer of the Century. He's on the advisory board of the President's Council for Physical Fitness and Sports. He's a member of the Board of Advisories of Advisors, excuse me, for the United States Department of Education. He was in charge of the National uh, July 4th festivities, 1983, at uh, Washington, D.C. He was a martial arts instructor for Muhammad Ali, George Allen, Jan Anderson, Jack Anderson, Irv Cross, Jack Valenti, and over 100 United States congressmen. The inventor of the martial arts safety equipment, the founder of martial arts ballet. He's an actor holding two lead roles in Sting of the Dragon Master and the Silent Master, which incidentally you can get at your local video stores. And he was the pro proposer of National Teacher Appreciation Day, which was signed by President Ronald Reagan on October 16, 1986. Again, this is going to be probably one of the biggest events to come in the Monmouth and Ocean County areas for quite some time as far as the martial arts is concerned. If you're interested in learning more about our show, Karate and You, please contact Grandmaster Art Bynes at Karate and You at TooGoodTV.com. Art Bynes, Karate and You, dedicated to your achievement. I want to have you on next week, and we want to see how your progress is. Is there anybody you'd like to say hello to or anything well, you'd like to say? Night, I'd like to thank you for having me here. I really enjoyed myself. And I'd like to say hello to my wife, Nancy, and my three girls, Robin, Carrie, and Bria. Okay, thank you very much. We look forward to having you next week. All right, this is Master Art Bynes, Rob Polvino. Until we meet again, thank you for inviting us into your home. Remember that the biggest obstacle in life is yourself. Overcome it, you achieve the greatest accomplishment of all. Thank you. Have a happy, healthy, and safe day. Chip. Jumbi. Okay. Chip. All right, more, more pizzazz into it. Jumbi. Chip. All right, I'm going to try and trick you now. Chop. Very good. Chip. Jumbi. Chip. Chop. Chip. Bow. Hi -yo. Okay, now, when you bow, make sure you take some time to bow. All right, bow with you.